Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here, <clears throat> and I am working on a cool, nifty little project, a bench power supply. Um, this has been a long time coming, I've collected parts for this for a while, and it's uh, making progress now, now that I'm actually sitting down and doing it. There's a bunch of these online, people have been making bench power supplies for, uh, you know, decades. And a lot of people use the ATX power supplies that come with computer towers as a large power source. And they do all kinds of cool things. And uh, that's great. You know, this is just another, another hack in that uh, long tradition of uh, benchtop power supplies. And this one's my own little take on it, though. I'm going to do a couple things here a little bit different that are kind of fun. Uh, the inspiration for this, by the way, is a hack that was posted online. Um, I don't have my phone in front of me, but I will post in the description where this hack originally came from because I want to give credit to the person that um, came up with this. And it basically, it's a Kingston laptop power supply, um, 33197, I believe, is the model number. It's a 120 volt AC DC power adapter. And that's what that big board that goes to the top of that big PCB down there. And it's pretty sweet. It's, uh, you know, you're. you're typical MacBook charger whatever or laptop PC laptop and what's cool about it though is it actually has the capability of not only uh, changing the voltage on the output but current limiting as well um, and this was due to just the design natively when you plugged in different plugs for different laptops it would limit the current and voltage accordingly so it's actually just a very high quality universal laptop power supply that I'm hacking and as you can see here, the AC signal goes in there. What's really unique about this too, though, is it also accepts 12 volt DC. Pretty sweet, meaning I could make this portable. I don't really feel a need to do that yet. I'm not sure what situation I would ever need to have a portable benchtop power supply for. I just can't imagine needing that because I'm whenever I'm needing a variable power supply, it's because I'm testing stuff. I'm at a place with a wall outlet. But, you know, something to keep you know in mind that I could plug a 12 volt source in there and have this hook up to my car or something maybe if I was fixing a car that could be useful I could hook it up to the car battery and diagnose some stuff I don't know um, so yeah uh, basically took that hack and ran with it I uh, have a current limiting knob right here and a voltage set knob right there I have one of these really cheap little voltage readouts which are great you know, a couple bucks, but what I really am excited about is I'm putting this in here, and these have been becoming really popular online with good reason. Uh, these are this this one in particular is a portable watt meter, or I'm sorry, not a portable watt meter, but just a really high end watt meter, and uh, it has Wi-Fi and it talks to this base here, uh, and you hook up your signal through it, and then it reads out the output amperage, voltage, and wattage which is great. Um, I've been using it to test all kinds of stuff and I figure what what better use of it than to put it in my own bench supply. What I'm also pretty sure I'm going to do as well is add a switch, a little DPDT right here, so that I can input my own uh, my own source for this as well. So this will actually double as a bench power supply and uh, a watt meter, just a nice watt meter when you have a, a source, a voltage source to put in. And so this will give obviously the most accurate readings, but I wanted this, this one just, you know, just to have it because uh, it's easy, easy to read and it's nice to have two voltage readouts to kind of compare and, and test accuracy. Um, these are obviously the terminals for the output. I'm going to paint this one red for obvious reasons. Um, and uh, what else? I uh, added a power switch right here, illuminated AC power switch, simple enough. Uh, what's, what I did was I took off the top plastic and I'm actually going to put some thermal pads here and like a big chunky heat sink to make sure this thing can really push a lot of power. There's a resettable fuse here. I actually do want to put in a, um, a fast blow fuse, a screw in terminal as well. I just need to order one of those but I think it's a good idea. There's a diode in here for reverse polarity protection, obviously, and uh, 
So the way this is going to work is this will go in right here like so. And uh, I'm going to have a USB port sticking out here. Show you what that's going to look like. USB port sticking out like that, which is what this will plug into. That'll plug into the USB port there. And the reason for that is I can unplug it, give it its own USB power source, and mount it if I have a place where I'm trying to use it uh, that I can't look over at the bench power supply very easily, or say the bench power supply is, you know, somewhere on my shelf that's it's not, you know, the best viewing angle. It's a nice option to have. And uh, what else? The the watt meter itself needs a 12 volt supply, so I just took a Netgear router. These are everywhere. Uh, power supply, and I put some of this uh, adhesive pad. These these adhesive pads you can get. Uh, it's, it's this stuff. Uh, you can get this on eBay or other places. And I put you know two pads there. I did the same for the bottom of this board that has two pads as well, adhesive pads. And so this will just stick to the side like so. Um, you'll have your 12 volt power supply, and those two pins will go to the AC, and this wire will go to power this. Now, obviously, you know, I could have found a, you know, a 12 volt power supply that's not in the case and has, um, you know, that looks neater or whatever, but this is so easy, you know, just find one of these for free and, uh, jam it in there. Um, so yeah, I'll have that in there and, uh, have the watt meter up front and I still have a lot of room if I get really ambitious down the road I might add this LM2577 I might make my own board these can't handle very much current to put in here with an additional knob for high voltage because this maxes out at 25 volts and if I put an LM277 or LM288 uh, which handles more current then I can actually have this go up to 40 volts which would be kinda nice uh, not a lot of applications that I work on that go that high but they're I do want to go to 27 because that's what uh, mobility scooters um, use. Uh, that's the that's the peak voltage of uh, mobility scooters and mobility wheelchairs. So I might add that, but we'll see. It's a lot of work so far, a lot of drilling and stuff. I mean, I guess not that much work. Maybe it took me a day, but um, yeah, it's kind of fun project. And you know, I know you can buy. There's some cheapo ones, power bench top power supplies that you can buy that do a lot of what this does but um, you know this was this was basically free I got this power I found this power supply uh, I think you can get it really cheap if you go to a thrift store or look online probably this I got for free uh, most of these parts were salvaged including these knobs I think the only things I actually bought were this voltmeter for a couple bucks uh, the two pots because I needed linear pots to control it more accurately uh, so I bought those, and must have bought the case at some point. Maybe I found it. No, I found the case. Uh, I think the only thing I actually spent real money on was the watt meter, and that was twenty bucks, twenty-two bucks. And I'm actually using it as a watt meter still. I'm not actually changing anything uh, as far as that goes. So it's a watt meter, and it's a readout for the bench top power supply. So when you consider that, you know, put some elbow grease into this, and I'm basically making a benchtop power supply for under ten bucks, which is pretty sweet. Now, of course, it's a couple days of work, or maybe a day of work if you if you really hustle. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. I'll post. Uh, I'll try to post another video, or maybe edit this into a longer video when it's all done to show you guys. And oh yeah, let me actually plug it in. I can show you right away because it's already. It is already reading out some stuff, reading out the voltage and everything. It just doesn't have all the bells and whistles installed yet. Dun, 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 dun. Let's plug it in here. There's also a fuse uh, under the power supply as well, or under the power AC inlet in jack. Um, so it's fused up pretty well. I'll turn it on there and got an illuminated AC switch, which I always like. You can tell when your wall voltage is working as well. And you turn this knob and you get your your voltage rise up to 25.3. And then here's your current limiting, which it turns off, you turn it all the way to the left, which is great, because that means it, it really does limit it to the point where this can't even be powered. So it uh, is already uh, yeah, pretty pretty sweet. And uh, you know this knob could be a little bit 
less sensitive. But um, you know, I used a 10k pot for both of these. Um, you might you might want to go with a 20k, um, and then obviously it won't go below 3.4 whatever because it powers off this. But when I install this, this will go down to whatever you know down to zero volts because that's not dependent on this supply to power it. It's going to be dependent on that that 12 volt supply that I'm that I'm going to put in. So uh, that'll work great. And yeah, I guess the only limitation of it right now is that it's it's only going to 25 volts. But that can change with a little bit more hackery. So have fun modding benchtop power supplies out there. Make sure that if you uh, make sure that you also look up your options for buying stuff because they have these really cool. I think it's like DR V505 V or something. They have all these like really cool. Um, built-in uh, step-down uh, adjustable supplies that that look like this and you basically give it a, a, a big fat power supply and then it has a knob and you can uh, adjust the voltage really well and so there's just check around online because there is some really cool stuff for making benchtop power supplies and you might be able to save yourself a lot of work um, I might have gone a different route had I known some of the other options available but I'm still having fun with this and I still like um, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't have gone a different route. I still like what I'm doing here. But it's good to know your options before you sink a bunch of time into a project like this. Anyway, have fun hacking. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.